Look at me, already combining episodes into one video because I have no time management skills. Great. Awesome. I started putting some things together to talk about episode 2 when it first came out, but I had trouble trying to get my thoughts in order, and I think it had something to do with how good the first episode was. But as you can tell by the title, today we are looking at The Promised Neverland episodes 2 and 3. I'm the girl otaku, and these are my thoughts. World building and plot development was definitely the focus of episode 2. Norman and Emma form the theory that the brain is the part of the body that the demons enjoy eating the most, so those who are smarter and earn higher grades are considered better merchandise. For the sake of the plot, I guess this is okay, but realistically, I don't see how scoring higher on tests makes your brain taste better. I mean, the older kids obviously are going to be the most developed, but I think that's strictly an age thing. Don't tell the demons. The next shipment, according to Norman, should be in about two months, so that gives the kids some time to plan an escape. Something that everyone has no doubt already noticed is Emma is like practically incapable of acting natural. Almost every time she's on screen or within Isabella's line of sight, she has this terrified look on her face. I will say though, I thought her bringing up Connie right to Isabella's face was pretty ballsy. Even Norman was like... <laughs> Probably the most important thing I want to talk about is this second to last scene in the woods where Ray interrupts Emma and Norman's plot fest. I think Ray brings up the main issue we are all thinking about when it comes to escaping the farm. There are way too many young kids there for this to work. There is a shot where just Norman and Ray are talking and Ray's like, why are you encouraging Emma? If things go this way, then she's gonna die. And Norman says, I won't let her die. That's why I'm going to utilize myself. Now that clip was in one of the trailers as well, and when I saw it, I was like, um, what do you mean by that? All I'm saying is, nothing bad better happen to Norman. We protect this boy at all costs. The introduction of a new adult character shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. Sister Crone is seen in the opening. I wasn't expecting another child though, at least not so soon. But that's all I really have for episode 2. Nothing major happened aside from the ending, and even so, that was pretty short. So now let's move on to episode 3. Now, I enjoyed episode 3 a little more than the second. Sister Crone is the focus of this episode, and yeah, she's pretty easy to focus on. But before getting into that, I want to share some ideas about the two adults. Norman mentions something about the possibility of them being under the demon's control, and I've seen other people who haven't read the manga talk about how they could be demons themselves pretending to be human. Both scenarios seem very possible. I'm leaning more towards the first one personally, but my theory expands on that just a little bit, but I'll get into that more later. During this episode, I realized that Ray and I actually have a pretty similar thought process. My very first thought after watching episode one was, all right, mama gotta go. Just take her out and the kids can stay. I also like Ray's little fork demonstration here. That really, uh, I thought that was kind of nice. The problem that arises from that plan, however, is that if Isabella doesn't contact the demons or meet them for a harvest, then they will no doubt send someone out to the farm or even make a visit themselves. That seems like a pretty lose-lose situation to me. Isabella contacts someone outside the farm to check in, and during this conversation, we learn not only does her farm produce the best merchandise, the children are to be used in some sacrificial offering ceremony called Tifari. There's also someone or something that the demons worship, which was not a direction I thought this story was going. It's honestly giving me mad Jimmy Neutron vibes here. Going back to Sister Crone, her character is a bit strange to me, and I think a lot of people can agree with me. I'm still avoiding other people's videos on The Promised Neverland because I am not about to play games with these spoilers, but I've seen quite a bit of praise for how they introduced her character, and I can't wait to learn more about her, like where she came from and how she developed her motives. The entire scene of her talking to the doll, though, had me looking around asking what the actual <gasps> was going on. She was practically screaming her plans, and I was like, girl, I don't think Isabella heard you. I think you should be a little louder next time. I absolutely love the fact that the older kids are training the younger ones through the game of tag. It's a great idea, as long as they're careful. They can always hide behind the fact that no one has beat Norman at tag and everyone wants to win, but with a spy among them, especially if it's one of the older children, then it could get pretty messy. Speaking of tag, I feel like I missed out during my childhood. I have never played a game of tag, even remotely, this intense. 
The line, if you saw the harvest that day, then I'm on your side, said by Crone, got me thinking, and I literally have no idea what she could mean by that, because from this scene, it didn't really look like she was interested in helping the kids. Now, the most important thing I took away from this episode has to do with where the kids at the farm come from. I think it's fairly easy to see that the new child, Carol, looks a lot like Emma, and after noticing this, I realized that a lot of the kids have similar features. Now, this may be a coincidence, but if it's not, my guess is that these kids are artificial humans created by the demons, and going back to what I said earlier about the adult's role in the story, I'm thinking maybe Isabella and Crone could also be artificial humans, and they were raised by the demons so that they could perform these duties for them. Another idea I had is that the demons are experimenting with the formula or whatever it is they use to create the kids and are trying to perfect it so that they can create the best possible merchandise every time. Ugh, I feel so weird calling the kids merchandise, but that's literally what the demons think of them as, so I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, those are my thoughts on The Promised Neverland episodes 2 and 3. What did you guys think? Are Isabella and Crone demons themselves, or are they humans strictly following orders? Let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.